Hey, my name is Brandon Berry. If we haven't gotten the chance to meet yet, and uh, myself along with my wife Mariah right here, we're the lead pastors of God's House. And so we just want to thank you for coming out. We still need a lot of prayer, though, um, because we got three little boys, one little girl on the way. And you can see two of them are sitting right here and not in kids' ministry. So that should just tell you that the pastors need prayer, okay? <laughs> so pray for our family and for our kids. And, and, and I'm sure you can relate. And so today, if you didn't know, is Baptism Sunday. Come on, we're excited about Baptism Sunday. We did grand opening last week, and I was like, let's go straight forward. Let's just baptize people in the name of Jesus. Come on. And, and, and there's so many people. We've been really um, meeting for about a year now. And we started out in a little tiny office about as big as this stage um, about a year ago in Asperia, and we grew from there. And then we got kicked out of that office and we went into the parking lot of that office. We got kicked out of that parking lot. We came over to this parking lot when we were under construction. And we, we, we finally came into the building uh, a couple months ago, but last week was our grand opening. And through this, throughout this whole journey, people have been experiencing the love of God. And we really wanted to be a church for people that didn't like church. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Because I told a story last week. Dang, you guys really don't like church? Okay. <laughs> but I told a story last week. It's like, man, I, I came to church and I, I heard the message and it was good and all that, but I just really didn't fit in. And so we wanted to create an atmosphere. We want to create a church where everyone feels welcome. Everyone feels loved. Everyone feels valued. Where, where you can look up at the guy preaching, like, that's really the pastor. That's, that's really the guy. Yeah. <laughs> that's really it. And so we wanted to create a, a church like that, but we've been preaching this, the message of the gospel, and we've been seeing, people, uh, seeing lives changed. We've been seeing marriages restored. We've been seeing families healed. We've been seeing provision take place over people's finances, and people are really coming to love the Lord. As we've been preaching throughout this last week in a parking lot, throughout the last year in a parking lot. And so people have been receiving this gift of salvation, or, or maybe coming back to the love of God. And really, that's what it is. It's a gift. It's a free gift, this, this, this gift that God gives us of salvation. Because I think so many times we think that we have to earn it. we got to work for it. we gotta, we got to do a certain thing. we got to act a certain way. we got to check off all the religious boxes. But as we preach the message of the Bible, we see that, man, Jesus paid the whole price for all of us. And all we have to do is receive this free gift of salvation. Come on, how many of you guys like free gifts? Yeah. Oh, ladies, but yeah, free gifts. My wife's like, Nordstrom sale is this week. I'm like, no, that's not a free gift. We're, we're scamming you. But, um, man, people have been receiving this free gift of salvation and I was like, let's go for baptisms right now because people's lives have been changed. Let's dump them. Let's get them under the water. But I really want everyone to have an understanding really what baptism is because you know, human nature, we can just kind of follow the crowd sometimes. <laughs> we all know that, right? If, if one person doing it, we kind of just all do it, good or bad. And so as we're baptizing people, I really want people to have an understanding of why they're doing it and what actually baptism is. And not just following the crowd, because what can happen if you just do it just to do it, and you don't understand why you're doing it, you could be led astray. As things get hard and persecution comes and, and you go through those valley moments, if you didn't understand that, that you're building your faith on a foundation of Jesus. If you don't understand that, then you could you could kind of get off the, 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 the right path. Does that make sense? And so today I wanna I wanna answer this question for us. Why water baptism? Why water baptism? And so I'm gonna really make this real not not real long. I usually preach about two, three, four, five hours sometimes, just depending on how the spirit leads me. Um, but today's gonna, be, today is gonna be short because we're gonna get outside and I'm excited, I'm fired up. Uh, because today is a good day. And I don't know if you've ever been baptized or maybe you've ever seen your kids get baptized or maybe you were baptized as a baby, whatever it is, but it's a defining moment in people's lives. It's a day that they will never forget. And so I really want us to understand why water baptism. So I'm going to give us some, just a couple quick points. And, and maybe you were that person that was baptized as a kid or maybe as a young child. And, you know, like, I don't have to do that anymore. I checked off my religious duties. I don't have to do that. And that's great because, you know, there's some religions that teach, you know, you got to do it right away. They're out the womb. Sprinkle them with the water, right? And they got to be saved. The only problem is that's nowhere in the scriptures. Baptism is a thing that Jesus wants you to understand what you're doing. He really, he really wants you to know and believe in your heart that there's a, there's a transformation that took place on the inside. And so maybe that was you. You got baptized as a kid. And that's great. I honor parents that did that. Did that. I honor parents that, that want to raise their kids um, in the ways of God. That's a good thing. The problem is you just didn't know what you were doing. You know, 
that's not what baptism is about. Baptism is about having an understanding that God has done something on the inside of your life and you want to make it known to the world. And so as we walk through these couple quick points on why water baptism, I cannot have just a normal, um, like, title, why water baptism. If you ever heard me preach before, I like to be a little creative. And so it's like, why water baptism? Here's point one, two, three. I was like, that's kind of boring. And so I really spent some time with the Lord this week. I was like, I need a creative title. So I got a subtitle if you're taking notes. So why water baptism is my title. And as I was praying this week, God's like, well, if you remember a couple years ago, um, yeah, don't be throwing up my title now yet. If you remember a couple, any football fans in here? Football fans, a couple of you guys? Okay. Well, if you remember maybe four or five years ago, uh, the Seattle Seahawks used to be really good. And they were, in, they, were in, they were in the Super Bowl like two years in a row. Like They were always um, competing for a Super Bowl. And they had this player named Marshawn Lynch. Come on, you guys know who that is? Beast mode is what they call him because he's a beast on the field. And um, I remember he did this interview one time, and he did not like talking to the media. And so they were asking him all these questions, and he was, his response to all the media members was, I'm just here so I don't get fined. You guys remember that? <laughs> Marshawn, how are you doing this week? I'm just here so I won't get fined. He didn't answer any of their questions. Well, they were going to the Super Bowl, I think it was that same year, and the Super Bowl week, there's like hundreds of media people that want to interview all the star players. And so Marshawn had to go up there for like eight minutes, and he just sat there and didn't say anything for eight minutes. They were just asking him all these questions. Marshawn, are you ready for the game? Marshawn, how do you feel? Marshawn, are you nervous? And he just gave every single person the silent treatment. Kind of like how you guys are doing right now. And so after his, his obligation was done, he got up and he, he, he's getting ready to walk off the stage. And there was someone in the crowd named Deion Sanders. Maybe you guys might know him. He's one of the all-time greats. But he was acting as a reporter this day at prime time. And um, he said, Marshawn, real quick, it's Deion. And so he looked and he's like, oh, he just kind of gave him a nod, like, what's up? And he said, Deion was like, Marshawn, why aren't you answering anyone? It just seems like you're really, like you're not interested, you don't care about what's going on. And Marshawn looked back at him. And he gave him just a one-line answer. And it's the subtitle to my message today. He said, Dion said, why aren't you answering anyone? Marshawn said, I'm just about that action. I'm just about that action. Come on, that's the subtitle to my message today. I'm just about that action. Come on, because there's a lot of Christians who, who want to talk about it, but not be about it. Come on, we got to be about that action. And that's what we're talking about today. Why water baptism? Because we're about that action. We're not, just, we're not just a church that preaches the message of the Bible. Yes, we do that, but we also preach the methods of the Bible. Amen? And so if it's in the Bible, we're going to do it. We're going to be about that action. And so some of you like that. Some of you guys are like, that's Ebonics. I am not saying that at all. Well, for, I am about that action. Okay? Or about that action, boss, is really what he said. But. And so number one, why water baptism? Water baptism is an act of obedience. It's an act of obedience. If you remember when Jesus was here on the earth, he lived for 33 years. In the last three years of his ministry, they recorded every single thing that he did. They recorded all his miracles, everything that he, he said. And right before Jesus was getting ready to go back to heaven, he called his 11 disciples at the time. He called them together. And he said, listen, we need to have a little huddle. Because you guys have been with me for three years. You guys have been seeing all the miracles happen. You guys have been seeing me raise people from the dead, healing the sick, casting out demons. You guys have seen it all. But I got one last message for you. If, if, if you don't remember any of that stuff, here's what I need you to remember. This is your last final instructions. And so this is important. Jesus is telling this to his disciples. This is the last thing I need you to do. And we find it in, in Matthew chapter 20. He says this. Listen, guys. Go... Instruction number one, go and make disciples. In other words, go and teach people about me. Train them up in the ways of Jesus. Train them up in the ways of me. Go and make disciples and what? And baptize them. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, he could have said, listen, go and make disciples and build churches. He could have said, go and make disciples and make sure all of my disciples have a Jesus peace with my little face on it. He could have said, go and make disciples and feed the homeless. Go and make disciples and, and start and send people out on mission trips. He could have said any of that stuff, which is all good, but he didn't. He said, go make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit because he wanted his disciples, his people, the people that follow Jesus, he wanted them to not just have head knowledge, he wanted them to have heart knowledge. He said, get my message in them and then baptize them because when something goes from your head to your heart, there's a corresponding action that takes place. 
And so maybe you're in here today and you know all about Jesus and it's in your head, you know about him, but he's done something on the inside of you. He's healed your marriage. He's set you free. He's, he's broken that bondage, that addiction from your life. Jesus is saying, no, don't let it just be in your head. Have it go down to your heart because when something's in your heart, you'll move on that thing. Amen. When something gets on the inside of you, when you have passion, when you care about something, come on, you'll start to work towards that thing. Jesus is saying, be about that action. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. Now, I don't, I don't know what high school, I don't know what junior high you guys went to, but I went to Victor. Okay? And we had this thing in my school called fights. I know nowadays, come on, they're like, yeah, I went there too. Right? But 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 nowadays, you know, they're kind of soft. They don't, they, just, they don't do that no more. It's all online. But we had fights. Okay? It's all we had fights. And so, you, there was two types of fights at my school. The ones you knew about, right, that everyone would get happy about, like, oh, uh, Debo and Tyrone about to fight, you know? <laughs> Everyone would know about it and it would be planned. Or there was the ones that just came up out of nowhere. It was like, oh, fight, and everyone ran over there. Well, the, 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 so when, when you're about to fight, there's, there's two types. The one where, you know, they, 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 they're walking back and forth and they're talking, they're like, do something about it. Do some, now you do something about it. Now, and, and, then, and then someone, typically me, because I'm an instigator, come on, any instigators in here? Love to see a good fight? Don't, not anymore, I'm, I'm, that was pre-saved, all right? But, but love to see a good fight. And so typically if they're arguing too much, someone yells in the crowd, stop talking! And be about it. Do something. Swing, right? Because we want to be about that action. And I'm not I'm not saying anyone in here to fight. But I'm saying you're showing up to the fight. You're showing up to church. You're doing the right thing. God has done something on the inside of you. Stop talking about it and be about that action. Go down to that water and come up out of that thing a new creation. Come on, the old things of ours that have passed away, all things have become new. This is what it's about. Going down into that water and letting the, the, the water... The, the, letting Jesus wash you, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. We're, we're about the message and the methods. We're about the message and the message. This is the last instructions of Jesus. Go, make disciples, and baptize in the name of Jesus. Number two, baptism is an act of identification. It's an act of identification. You know, there was a, a guy in the Bible, his name was John. John the Baptist, he got the nickname. And John was really the first evangelist. He's, he's the first one that really went out and preached the good news. And um, what's so cool about John is like 700 years before John, there was this prophet, and his name was Isaiah. And the prophet Isaiah got a word from God and spoke it. And he said, there's going to be one that's going to make way for Jesus. He's going to go out to the wilderness and he's going to preach the good news that there's one, there's a savior coming. And, and Isaiah was talking about John. And so John, he would go out to these public lakes and uh, rivers and streams. He would go out to these public areas with water, and he would just start preaching. And what was so cool about John, and I'm going to try this one week, is every single week John would preach, he had the same message. The same message. Imagine this. Because i got to be creative. Like we got to keep you entertained at church nowadays. Imagine coming to church for 52 weeks straight, and it was the same message. He would be like, good morning, church. My name's John. And uh, I got the same message I, I preached last week. I got three points, so write these down on your tablets. No, didn't get it, okay. I, I got the same message that I preached last week, but three points, real quick, here we go. Point number one, repent. Repent. Whatever you're doing that's not of God. Point number two, turn to God. If you're sinning, if you're living in the world, if, if you're not doing anything, repent and turn to God. First two points. Point number three, last one for the day, and everyone can go home, be baptized. Repent, turn to God, be baptized. This is what John would do day in and day. He would go to these public places and preach this message. And, and the crazy thing is, is baptism, in the Greek, the word is baptizo, which at the time wasn't a, a church word, wasn't a spiritual word. It just mean, meant to, to wash, to wash yourself, to cleanse yourself, to em, emerge something in water. And so you could imagine the people, and, and back in the day, they didn't, there was the public bodies of water. People would go there to wash their clothes. People would go there to wash their dishes. People would go there to bathe. And so you could just imagine the families out there taking their baths for the week or whatever, or washing their clothes, doing their laundry in these big public lakes. And here comes John, the Baptist, out here saying, Repent! Turn to God! Baptizo! Baptizo. And the people are taking baths like, what is John talking about? We wash ourselves. We're already washing ourselves. Like, so weird. Like, this guy is weird. 
that, because that's what it meant. It just meant to wash yourself, to cleanse, to, to, to emerge something in water. It made no sense to some people. But John would do this day after day after day, the same message all the time. And what happened was thousands of people, this word that John would preach would start to resonate with some people. They would start to get a revelation of what God was talking about. All a revelation is, is a revealed truth. So as the message was being preached, some people heard baptizo as a cultural word, right? Like, like some of the ladies tell your husbands, like, you better baptizo before you come to bed, right? All that kind of stuff. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. But, but it was just a cultural word. But some people, they would hear baptizo, baptizo. And the revealed truth of God would start to resonate on their heart. They would say, you know what? Maybe there's something to this message that he's saying. Maybe I do need to be cleansed. Maybe I do need to be washed. Maybe I do need to be forgiven. Maybe I do need to be set free. Maybe there's something to this word that John is preaching. And as he would do this day after day after day, thousands of people would come and be baptized by John. As the word was going out, something was happening on the inside. Maybe for some of you, something's happening on the inside of you right now. That the revealed truth, the word of God, as it's being spoken, something is starting to resonate. Something is starting to identify. You know what? I do I do resonate. I do identify with the message of Jesus. You know, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. And, and, and repent. Turn to God and be baptized. And the crazy thing is John the Baptist, one day he was taking a water break. Okay. <laughs> he was taking a water break, and, and, and he, he was he was he was meeting with all of his 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 baptismal committee. He was like, "Hey guys, you know things are going really good. Like we got thousands of people. Everyone's turning to God. Like we're baptizing all these people. This is amazing." And he's saying, "But listen, I need to tell you guys something. Because we're we're doing a good work, but there's one that's coming, and he's so much greater than me." Like, like, he's so much better than me. Like, like I, I'm not even worthy to be his slave. Like, I, I can't even hold his sandals. And you know I don't do feet, right? Like, I, I'm not even worthy to hold up his, his, his boots. Like, this is how great he is. And as he's having this little meeting with his, his baptismal committee, here comes Jesus walking. This is true. This is in the Bible. It's Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. He says this, I baptize with water, but though, uh, I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is greater than I am. So much greater that I'm not even worthy to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And as he was saying this to these people, Jesus walks up. He's like, look, there he is. That's the one. And as Jesus walked up to this little meeting that's taking place, Jesus says, you know, John, you need to baptize me. And John's like, no, are you? I'm not even worthy to be your slave, let alone hold your shoes. I cannot baptize you. You're the Savior. You're God. I can't baptize you. But Jesus is like, no, you need to baptize me. Look at Matthew chapter 3, verse 15. But Jesus said, it should be done. It should be done. It should be done that you baptize me, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. Now listen, either Jesus is our example or he's not. Either we do the, the, the things that Jesus did or we don't. And, and Jesus is so good that, that he, doesn't, he doesn't just make us identify with him. But he, as, as God, as perfect, identified with sinners, with us. He's God. He doesn't have to be baptized. But he's giving us an example. He said it should be done. So if you're in here today and you're thinking, well, are you going to go to hell if you don't get baptized? No. But we, we see that in the Bible. No, you, you're not going to go to hell if you don't get baptized. But it should be done. My, my, my disciples, the people that follow me, it should be done. This is what Jesus is telling us. So why get water baptized? One, it's an act of obedience. Two, it identifies us with God. And number three, it, it's an act of definition. It's an act of definition. It's a defining moment in your life. It's a day that you will never forget. There's something special. There's something spiritual that happens when you go under the water and you come out. Some of you guys are going to experience that today. You go down with all your baggage, with all your shame, with, with all your sin, with all your worry, with all, everything that... that, that that we've gone through this life, you go down into that water. And the Bible says that we identify with Christ in resurrection. But when we come out of it, we're made new. We're a new creation. And it doesn't have to be a long process between believing that God is your Savior 
and identifying and, and acting on it. It doesn't have to be a long, drawn out process. We see it in Acts chapter, uh, in, in the book of Acts. I don't have the notes here, but but there's a there's a eunuch, and he gets saved. Uh, he gets delivered. He, he hears the message of Jesus, and he's like, aren't I supposed to get baptized now? And they're like, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Like, we want to make sure everything's right. We want to make sure there's fake grass out there and a little horse trough and there's balloons. Like, we want to make sure you're all good, so wait until Sunday to come to church, and then we'll baptize you. And he's like, no, 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 I believe right now. I want to get baptized, like, right now. And they're like, no, well, we have to sing three songs and a message, then we can baptize you. And he's like, no, I believe in God right now. And so they're like, well, there's that water over there. He's like, I want to dump right now. I want to go under right now because when God does something in the inside of you, you want to tell everybody about it. You want to, you want to tell people how good he is. You want to, you want to let people come on. Any, any newlyweds or people that have just got married, you want to tell everyone about it. Like, we get it. You're in love. Right? Like, we understand, but you're just so excited because something on the inside of you is happening. We see it again in, in, uh, in with Paul and Silas when they were locked up. In jail, right? They they were in prison. They were singing reckless love at midnight. They were like, God, you're so good. They were singing all their oceans and, and fire and wind. They were singing all these songs and the prison walls came crashing down, right? And the guard who was supposed to be guarding them was about to commit suicide because he's like, I let everyone out of the prison. This is bad for me. And if Paul and Silas were like, No, you're loved by God. It's gonna be okay. Jesus came to save you. And he identifies, right? He accepts the love of God. He accepts the love of Christ. And the Bible says that they all go back to the jailer's house and his whole family gets saved. Johnny, Ricky, Bobo, Shemaine, all of them, they all got saved and they all got baptized. All I'm trying to say is there doesn't have to be a long process from believing to being about that action. Because sometimes we have all these fears like, I don't want to get my hair away, you know? I don't want to, my, my nails just got done or whatever the case is. Or like my, my third, third cousin on my mom's second side is not here to see me, you know? Like, you can post it. Don't even worry about who's here to see you or not. Let everyone know that you identify with Jesus. There doesn't have to be this big, long process. We can do it right now. We can do it right now. Yes, sir. Right now. And number four, the last one, as the team comes up real quick, I told you I'm going to be quick. The last one, number four, is baptism is an act of renewal. It's an act of renewal. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 that we were therefore buried with him through, baptize, through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Meaning that when we go down in that water, we identify with Christ in death. But when we come out, we identify with his resurrection. We identify with new life. We identify with new beginnings. That we now have the power to live the life that God has called us to live because God is now on our side. The Spirit of God is now living on the inside of us. That, 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 that when we identify with Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and, and dwells on the inside of us. We are God's house, right? Hebrews chapter 3. For Christ is faithful as the Son over God's house, and we are His house. The Spirit of God comes and dwells on the inside of us. And, and He now lives with us. And so we can now be everything that God has called us to be. But when we become baptized, we become a new creation. And everything that God has called us to be, we can now be that. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 says this. All who have been, oh, all who have been uh, united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ. Like putting on your clothes. Come on, how many of you guys like to pop tags? <laughs> All who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ. Come on, what you wearing, girl? Oh, this is Christ. <laughs> right? We do it, right? Oh, this is my new Louboutin or Gucci or whatever it is. Oh, but Christ looks so good on you. Christ looks so good on you. Like, like popping new tags. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Amen? Amen? If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Come on, that's a word for somebody right there who's struggling with old things, old thoughts, old patterns, old addictions. The Bible says old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. See, when you get water baptized, water baptized it's an act of of renewal. Why water baptism? Because we're about that action. 
We're about that action. And I don't know where your walk is with Jesus. Maybe you don't even believe in God. That's fine. But something on the inside of you right now is resonating with the message. Because God loves you so much with all your baggage, with, with everything that you've gone through. God loves you so much that he sent his son, his one and only unique and one of a kind son. The Bible says his beloved son. To, 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 to come and to live on this earth and to, to live a perfect life only to be brutally beaten, stripped, naked, whipped, hung on a cross, shamed, embarrassed, and ultimately killed for us as sinners. That if we put our hope and our faith in Him, the Bible says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that He did that for us, then we will be saved. And so maybe the Spirit of God is, is speaking to some of you guys right now and saying, you know what, I need to, 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 to believe this. That God is for me. That God died for me. That He has a plan for me. That I got a new hope. I got a, I got a second chance. And so every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to pray that if you've never received Christ in your life today, that, that you would receive Him today. Maybe for the first time or maybe... Maybe, you know, you, you believed as a kid or, or you believed a long time ago, but for whatever reason, you've walked away. You've stopped living for God and you want to rededicate your life today. I want to pray for you. And I want you to just repeat after me. It's not a special prayer. It's not a magic prayer. It's just confessing with our mouth that we believe Jesus is Lord. And so if you want to pray that prayer for the first time or maybe uh, to rededicate your life, just repeat after me. And we'll say it all together just because we're a family. But say, Dear God, I love you. Forgive me of my sin." cleanse me of all my past. Today, I believe that you died for me. And today, I choose to make you my Lord and my Savior. Today, I'm new. Today, I'm set free. Today, I'm forgiven. Today, I'm a Christian. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. And I love, I love this. God is so good. If you just said that prayer and you believe it in your heart, that you don't have to wait to get baptized. We believe that, that like any relationship, there's steps to it. And so your next step is to get water baptized. You don't have to wait. We got t-shirts for you. We got towels for you. You're going to be raised to life in Christ. Come on, we all want to cheer for you. We want to celebrate you. And so what we're going to do is this. I didn't preach for long today because I want to dunk some people. I want, I want people to remember this day forever. And so, if I can be so bold right now, that I feel like the Spirit of God is, is telling me, and if I don't say it, I'm going to get in trouble. I feel like there's some people in here that want to get baptized, but, but, but they're just like, mm, this is your nudge. Let me just push you off that cliff and say, do it. You don't have to pray about it. The answer is already yes. Do it. And so, I know, I think we have like, uh, he, I saw six people that signed up online to get baptized. He said there's 10 people. If I can be so bold, and if I can encourage you to be so bold, if you want to get baptized today, if you signed up to get baptized today, I don't want to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to say anything or do anything, or I'm not going to interview you, nothing like that. But if, if you could just be so bold with your faith, I say, you know what? Jesus has been too good to me that I cannot stay quiet anymore. If you would just be so bold, would you come up here and join me on this stage? If you're getting baptized today, or if you want to get baptized today, come on. Maybe the Spirit of God is speaking to you right now and say, you know what? It's time. I've been a Christian for too long. I, I, I've known this for too long, and today I'm taking that step. I'm no longer going to be quiet about my faith. I'm no longer going to be quiet about my Jesus. I'm going to shout. I'm going to give Him praise. I'm going to give Him honor, and I'm going to live my life for Jesus. I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to show Him how good He is, how faithful He is, how worthy He is. Come on, give it up for these people who want to get baptized today. So we're going to go outside. I want you to grab your kids because I want your kids to see what's taking place outside. And so go grab your kids. 
don't leave the party unless you really want to come on you don't leave the party before the presence right and so go outside hang out a little bit talk to each other get to know each other these people are going to change put on one of these t-shirts and we're going to baptize some people and we're going to celebrate their new life in christ amen amen, amen. amen. you guys just stick around for just a minute i want to pray over you guys and give you guys some t-shirts and the towels and get you guys going in jesus name amen